um, salary and fringe expenses for this position will be op offset by a vital access provider funding from the New York State Office of Mental Health in the amount of $138,118 for a period of 24 months and thereafter will be a offset by reimbursement for services provided by the nurse at the clinic. Uh, this project will improve access and quality of physical health care resulting in improved medical outcomes by providing essential services such as health monitoring, tobacco cessation, and medical care coordination to clients at the mental health clinic. Resolution, please. Mr. Gilliland, a second. A second by um, Mr. McNally. Um, Okay. No. By Tyler, yes. Yeah, but you're not on this. No, no. Oh, I mean, the second one. Mr. Mayor, you're off of that second. Yep. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 That will be primarily Medicaid, which is about, about two-thirds of our, our business, our revenue at the clinic. But yeah, it would be all third-party billing. Yes, um, as a matter of fact, the, um, this was a, a VAT funding grant that came through the Office of Mental Health. They hired a consultant, Alvarez and Marcel, to kind of look at our financials. The whole point of it was to put something in place that would be sustainable. Any other concerns? I just have a couple of questions. Yeah. Steve, is this, the 138000 is that intended to pay for full-time for two years? Or? That, that's, that's a full-time position, correct. And you think that 138 cover two years? There's, there, there's going to be... Um, billing revenue coming in. Plus, plus, plus billing revenue will, will make the difference. I did distribute some of the uh, sheets on the civil service positions from the um, from the uh, contract. Um, originally, uh, I had thought that this position was going to be um, there's a little bit of a discrepancy in the in the handbook in that. The registered nurse position was listed in two different places, and I went to the grade table and found where where that position was listed, um, and uh, and then come to find out the position that is operative in the in the uh, at public health right now is actually a non grade position. But what I'm proposing to do is fill this as a grade position, which would be the the less expensive. Okay. Any, any other questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Anything else today, Steve? No, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Public health, Linda Beers. Good morning. I have several resolutions. I've actually grouped them together to make it easier for you. Uh, the first I want to talk to you about is an invitation, quite honestly. And I just wanted to invite you all and recognize that April 4th through the 10th is National Public Health Week. And I'd like to invite you immediately following the full board on April 4th to a public health department open house. Um, all of my staff will be there at each department to talk about what they do. We did this several years ago, and we'll have somebody on the PA saying every six minutes, and you'll move from module to module, and I promise to get you out on time. And we'll also have some snacks and chotskis. I don't know. <laughs> um, Bill Farabee was questioning me on what that meant. Anyway, we have some hats and public health memorabilia that we'll be able to distribute. Lots of things have changed in public health, so we'd love you all to come. So again, it's um, I'm just recognizing April 4th through the 10th is National Public Health Week and inviting you to come. So I need a resolution for that. 
a resolution to that effect by Mr. Scott's father, the second. Mr. Gorland, any discussions or questions? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Next resolution is to accept my PAC, which is my professional advisory committee. Um, they went through the policies and procedures of our public health department. They've already been approved by Dr. McKeever, a medical exam uh, director, and um, I need a board resolution to make them finalized. A motion to that effect. Mr. Scott, <laughs> second by Mr. Mayor. Any questions or concerns? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. The other, after following the PAC, um, we seek board approval to accept Chrissy Lurkies as the OFA representative, Patty Basho as the emergency service representative, and Charles Harrington as the board of supervisor um, to our professional advisory committee. Motion to that effect by uh, Mr. Monte, a second. And Mr. Gilliland, any questions or concerns? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Okay. Now I have two resolutions before you, and I'm going to increase the cost. Well, increase the fee and it's to maximize reimbursement because the reimbursement rate went up but if I leave my own rate lower I can't maximize the reimbursement so the first one is to, in order to maximize the revenue in conjunction with the cost per visit I request to increase my school skilled nursing rate from $225 to $230 it's a $5 increase but it matters on the other end of my billing and if you would like I can tell the other one at the same time and that is to raise the administration fee from immunization, which is lead testing, HIV, HCV, from $25 to $35. This is consistent with the New York State Department of Administrative Charge for Immunization Calculation, which is actually at $42. So I'm still underneath that. So I'm asking for two resolutions. One, to increase $5 for the skilled nursing, and one, to increase $10 for administration fee of immunization. A resolution, please, to endorse both of these resolutions. Mr. Scott's private, second by Mr. Merrill. Any questions or concerns? All those in favor? Just on, 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 on the reimbursement from the 25 to 35? Yeah. Only administration, so people that would have to pay on their own? We use a sliding fee scale. It would all come down. And I think it should have been attached. I have the table. It'll... There's a whole range, and it always comes out to almost the same admin fee if you make between this and this. Um, I, don't, I gave it to Judy. If you'd like to see it, I'm happy to provide it. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Next I have two more resolutions to move unexpended funds. This is money that was given in 2015, and I need to move it into 2016. These were lump sum grants. One is from the New York State Health Foundation, and the other one is from the Ebola grant. Remember that? Now it's, now it's um, Zika. <laughs> um, and so to, in order to spend that money, I need to move it from the 2015 budget into the 2016 budget. A resolution endorsing these two. Mr. Gilliland, a second. Mr. Murphy, any questions or concerns? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. And my last two are, ones, um, these are to accept money. Um, we got an Adirondack Rural Health Network grant in the form of $2,000, and we used that money to send Rose Coop Angelico to um, IBLC training, which is lactation specialist training for RNs, which is, now that she's certified in that, she can bill for it. We've always done it, but we were never able to bill because of the course cost $2,000. So um, she's gone, and she has to do her clinical, and then she will be a licensed since IBLC registered nurse. So that's $2,000. And the other one is to accept lead poisoning prevention grant. We get this every year. Um, and it's in the grant of, of the amount of $19,082 for the period of 10 one to 9-30-16. Can they be together or do you need them separately? Well, I put them separately, but they're both um, accepting grants. 
so the two the two resolutions for accepting grants one for two thousand dollars and one for um let how do i do it well we can do um i guess we can move yeah. are you keeping track of them yeah, yeah. 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 i tagged them with it <laughs> so we can move them over so you mean uh, both of those are resolutions uh on a motion please Mr. Mayor, you in a second. Mr. Gurley, any other questions or concerns? Yes. In the lead poisoning prevention grant, yes. what is exactly do they do? Where I'm going with this is the, I had a um, lengthy conversation with Kristen Sayers, who's Department of Health, Correct. in regards Environmental. to the issues with water. Okay. Sure. Water sources, uh, what's going on, and who's at falls, and in Michigan, and so on. And municipalities are required to test for certain things, you know, on a monthly basis. Sure. Um, and then there's some things you test for every three years, and there's some that you test for can be up to ten years. Correct. And so, you know, those some of those tests are extremely expensive. So I was just wondering, can any of these funds be used for which is ridiculous. I, mean, I see you shaking your head no, but I mean that would be the first place I would think you'd want to test as a municipal water supply. Right, but so I'll make that clear. As you're aware, Essex County is not a full service county, so they've right. separated out the environmental section and then the public health section, the boots on the ground with the community versus you know restaurant inspections and all of those things. The environmental section does all of that testing, as well as municipalities some of them charge for water and whatnot. That testing is a requirement across the board of all municipalities evenly. Correct. I don't think they give grant money to... They, it, the testing that. is a requirement, but there's certain things that you are required to test for. Correct. The situation in Who's It Falls, Department of Health did not require testing for what they found in that water supply. Right. So I know the state right now is currently revamping how they look at municipal water supply Correct. and so on. So okay, so you've answered my question. So yeah. that money is not available for any is, type of water testing. This is blood level testing for okay. children, which we find in its paint abatement and that kind of an awareness building. So when, you, when you find it, where do you go with it from there? Do you when look we, for the reason, the source? Do. I mean, because it's a preventive service right. so we do so we test all children with a yeah, with test to see what their lead levels are doctors offices do it as well if there's any elevated love lead level they call the public health department and we do initiate investigation if it becomes a ward or something more environmental we include that side of the house if it's something in the house like lead paint or whatever then we talk to the landlord and also get environmental involved but absolutely there's a whole series of um, protocol that's found as soon as a child's lead levels are found to be elevated or an adult just doesn't happen that often it's usually children I, yeah I also would add that I sent you a white paper just last week it's actually from NYSAC it's really really well done um, on municipal water supplies and what they're testing and what they're looking for I encourage you to look at that it really explains what's going on and again it's from NYSAC not from the Department of Health but they did a really good job on that and if anybody wants more information I'm happy to work with you on that it isn't our area of expertise in the sense that it's done by Kristen Sayers but we have a very good working relationship and I'm happy to get out ahead of any problem that you might think could happen you're welcome any other uh, comments or questions uh, in regards to the testing of wells? Uh, Crown Point has three wells, one of which is now offline because of pollutants. So there, it is monitored very closely, and the results are provided to all of the users. In regards to uh, lead paint, I uh, previously had been chair of the a committee for preschool education 
um, we had uh, several incidences of lead uh, paint uh, um, in, and um, as a result of that, there was a common denominator, and the common denominator was a large uh, house that had been uh, put into apartments. Uh, we recommended that this uh, house be tested for uh, a lead paint, and the end result was uh, that house was demolished. Exactly. So, uh, any other comments or concerns in regards to these two resolutions? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Office for the Aging. Good morning. Um, I have one resolution and a couple of quick updates for everybody. Um, the first res um, resolution is to request um, to accept 3E carryover and to increase the following revenue and appropriations. We'd like to increase um, three of our contracts with North Country Home Services and Phillips Lifeline. This is one of the two programs that funds aid coverage and Lifeline for older adults in the county that really, really um, they definitely need this help. Um, since the beginning of the year, we've been able to add 12 new clients to this program, um, 3E care, uh, caregiver as well as our ISAP program. Um, so this money would definitely go to great use. The resolution, Mr. Mayor, who is second? Mr. Gilliland, any uh, comments or concerns? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay. Just another um, update as well is in April, on April 16th is National Healthcare Decisions Day. Um, so with that being said, the Office for the Aging and High Peaks Hospice is going to team together um, to raise awareness in regards to advanced directives, um, to let everybody know that you don't have to be um, a senior citizen in order to have an advanced directive. Any adult 18 and over should have an advanced directive so that way if there was ever a healthcare crisis, the family would know what their wishes were. So we're going to host this event at our Willsboro Essex site, which is located at the Reber Methodist Church on April 13th from 1 to 4. Um, we're going to task the um, town halls in both of those townships, as well as business um, uh, uh, people working in the community, um, schools, so on and so forth, to allow them to come in, see our site, as well as um, fill out their advanced directives. Um, that's just an FYI. And one last thing that we are very, very proud of um, at the office is each year we're tasked with completing what they call um, AIP, which stands for an Annual Implementation Plan. And what that is, is the blueprint to our office, both, um, both on the program side as well as the fiscal side. Um, that is all the different um, events that we're going to hold, how we're going to collaborate with other agencies, so on and so forth. Um, since January, when it became my responsibility to work on this um, and my fiscal staff. We were able to submit to the state a plan that they approved. Um, we were just notified of this and we are very pleased to announce that we were the first county in New York State to have their plan approved. That means that we're able to get all of our notification of grant awards and start vouchering. So that is something that we're very, very, um, you know, happy to report today. Any questions? Yeah, I guess probably for Dan. I'm, I had a question in regards to Office for the Aging and administratively. Are we under public health now, or are we? This is coming from some of my seniors. Okay, I, for all practical purposes, the departments have been combined by this board. Now, this board is always subject to approval by state agencies. We have submitted the request to public health. To, for that. Um, we're waiting on that approval. Once we get that done, we'll start the process with the, the Office for the Aging. So we're still in process. Um, the intent is to co combine the agencies, just the way the board directed, but it's not completed as of yet because the final state approvals are not in place. So, refresh my memory. Why was that advantageous to do that? I can't. Well, because again, they, 
there's a crossover of um, there's a there's a whole series of things that we um, looked at, but there's crossover of services. Um, they're in the same building now. Um, we didn't fill the director's position. Um, Chrissy's doing it as an acting director now, but her role would be as director of aging services under public health. Once it was combined, um, it was a you know an opportunity to look at. Um, combining departments in, in reducing overall um, number of people we hire, really. And still provide the same service. Frankly, the service has has been operating as a combined agency since January 1. Chrissy's been doing a good job, so as in Linda, um, there is no difference in the services that have been provided that I could see, um, or for that matter, that anybody else can see. So um, I think it's, uh, it's a successful. Um, Program. Just so if the state says no to this, then we're back to we're back to reorganizing, and we would have to then right. decide whether you wanted to hire Chrissy as the director and start over as um, whether you fill her back fill her position or not. But um, at this point, um, we're moving forward under the assumption that um, we can combine. I got to tell you, there are lots of departments that uh, statewide that are combined um, aging with different departments. Um, it is something. It's not newly invented it is a process by which other departments do um, other counties do use the same process well the state actually encourages consolidation <laughs> well yeah and i guess i you know if, if in fact the state agencies whether it be public health or aging somehow said to us that no you can't do this um i guess i would have to ask them um, to check with the governor's office because the governor's office has put a tremendous amount of pressure on counties to consolidate and if we have a consolidation plan that not only meets the needs of the people that we're serving and saves money I find it hard to believe why anybody would turn that down. Thank you. Any other questions in regards to that? Yes. So the under, way it's set up now because this was done before I, I came on um, so Chrissy is the acting right now Chrissy is the acting so she's the one that the go-to person the answer person mm -hmm. for this until the state says that we have a combined a combined one, one. Mm -hmm. all right thank you Mr. Scott so at that point if the state says yes we go to Linda well Linda would be again it's, it, it would be no different than what's going on now in public health. You have, you have a director of patient services, you have a director of prevent services, and you would have a director of, of aging services, which would be Chrissy. You would still, if you needed something, you would talk to Chrissy and Linda and Chrissy work together on a day-to-day -day basis. They're in the same building, they have meetings, they talk, they know what's going on. Um, so there wouldn't be any significant difference, I don't think, in how the department would function. It's just a question of, um, the umbrella it falls under. Mr. Gerland, you had a question? I was at the site of the Chief of the Aging Services. Any other concerns involving the Office of the Aging? Thank you. Transportation. Good morning. I just want to announce that the Mount Valley shuttle will be reducing service back to its normal schedule on March 27th. Um, the service we've been providing for medical answering service is really going well. We began a group ride in, on November 30th. Um, we're tr transporting two to five people per day on that. And so far it's working out pretty good. Um, I may, I did gotta talk to Dan, may think about buying another car, which would come from the funding that we're receiving from doing these rides. And the only reason for that is the two vehicles we have are hand-me-downs from social services, 
and I want to make sure we have dependable vehicles so we can keep providing these rides because the, every ride we put in our vehicles is one less that's going in a taxi. The taxi cost for 2015 was $2,496,818 for Essex County. So I'm trying to reduce that as much as I can. Um, other than that, that's all I have. What, what portion of that do we pay? Whatever the cap is, I believe. Again, this gets tricky when you go back to when you when you're talking about Medicaid funding. Um, Essex County, you know, I know this sounds crazy, but it doesn't really matter to Essex County in terms of the local tax base because we're capped off at the the six point seven million dollars that we pay. The state caps us. So if you have more Medicaid services right. that occur, that cost is then transferred back to the state. So we're not paying it per se in our local tax. You are, however, paying it in your state tax. So the reimbursement that the taxi companies get, I mean, that's a lot of money, you know, $2.5 million. If we were providing that service, would that revenue come back to the county? Well, sure, because any service that you can, anytime you provide a ride, that, that revenue comes back um, to the county as, as, a, as a revenue against Nancy's department. Now, again, you got to remember, Nancy's department can't make money per se. Um, they have to provide rides, and they have to um, have revenue to, what we're looking for is budget neutral in terms of all the services that Nancy provides under transportation. <laughs> So who monitors the rides? Who is making certain that the, the I know it's not us here, correct? I mean, no, who makes set up a, that they're legitimate costs, that right. they're going to the doctor, <laughs> not six people in the cab going to Walmart? No responsibility for that, no. The state set up their own oversight of the transportation, Medicaid transportation, um, that was how many years ago? 2012. In 2012, the state said, we're going to do a better job of this, we're going to set up our own, we're going to hire taxis, we're going to notify people of rides, we're going to do all those sorts of things um, within every county within the state. Um, and frankly, you know, that's when the cost exploded. Now, so prior to that, the cost was they were handled near what they are right now. Right. They were handled through both the DSS and transportation. Which would have one tend to believe that something's not right. <laughs> well, that's not for me to judge, but I can tell you that um, if you look at the numbers, the transportation cost uh, has gone way up since 2012 over what it was prior to that on a statewide basis for Medicaid transport. Any other questions? I guess just one other question. I think Ty Conderova, you can correct me if I'm wrong, you adopted some kind of a local law in regards to taxi companies? They did, yeah. They did. Um, and I know they're starting to you're seeing more and more in the county, and I think I think Nancy, you suggested a while back we seriously ought to consider some kind of a licensing for for cab companies, um, for what it's worth. Just my yeah, I honestly don't know Tom the, the impact of what that would involve at this point. I'm, you know, I haven't looked at it well enough to know. Um, I do know though that right now that that is whether they're licensed or properly authorized to do it's all transport is handled by the state. By DMV or through this? Through no, no, it's no. The state right. under yeah. set up their own transportation thing. John, did you have something? Just over here. I'm just about the, uh, just to tack on to that, uh, taxi problem. I don't know how many of supervisors are hearing complaints, but we have hear a number of complaints about the quality of the taxi services. I mean, there's some, probably most of them are okay, but there's some real severe outliers to the point where it's endangering the people that are being transported. And uh, I think Ticonderoga did pass some kind of local law that had created some kind of control, but also probably pushed the problem out to other towns. Uh, the process with the state 
when we hear a complaint, we give it to the state who is overseeing this new agency that they're contracting with, MAS. And as you would expect, they have some bureaucratic complaint process. Right. Uh, so it's time consuming to get any kind of feedback on it. So we're not really convinced that there's a strong quality control. So you might want to consider really looking into doing something that, like similar to Ticonderoga to get some kind of control on the very quality of taxes. That's what I just want to share. So as our Commissioner of Social Services, you highly recommend that we come up with some kind of a system here to not so much monitor, but there has to be some accountability here, obviously. I, I would say I would highly recommend looking at what you might be able to do to control the quality of taxi service in your town. That's about as far as I could go. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in terms of the county itself, I'm not sure that we have the authority to control um, how individual businesses operate within certain jurisdictions. In other words, Ticonderoga certainly has the right to have a local law that it controls how business is, is conducted within Ticonderoga. This is a question for Dan. I'm not sure whether we would, as a county, have the right to control those within town jurisdictions. The, the problem, as soon as, if you have one municipality that comes up with a local law in regards to delivery serve taxi service, they're going to go to the next town where there is no local law. Right. And if that town adopts one, they're going to go to the next town. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's why I think you need some kind of a uniform, county-wide, you know, if we can do that, you, right. you'll look yeah. into that. Okay. Thank you. Even if we can't do it, we could uh, come up with a recommendation for towns. Correct. Where, where they're all a right. Yeah. Uh, I would uh, suggest, Nancy, that you, uh, you look into this and come back with some recommendations that the uh, towns would be able to endorse. Okay. Any uh, other concerns to come to, uh, before transportation today? The uh, Human Services Committee is adjourned.